Welcome back. What do you need? They finally found a safe spot that they could call a camp. Morgan picked a secluded part of the camp, and Alistar picked a spot by the fire that he lit. Once he finished putting up tents, Angel asked him if it was normal to feel so bad after the joining. He said that it was, as her body adjusted to the taint, it would get better. Then Angel asked Alistar if he remembered when they first met Flemeth how focused she was on Angel. And what of you? Does your woman's mind give you a different viewpoint? Or do you believe as these boys do? A statement that possesses more wisdom than it implies. Be always aware. Or is it oblivious? I can never remember. So much about you is uncertain. And yet I believe. Do I? What? It seems I do. He said that he did. They both thought it was odd at the time that Flemeth said, So much is uncertain, yet I believe. They assumed at the time that perhaps Flemeth could sense something about Angel's ability to be a Grey Warden. Then Angel asked Alistar if he remembered when Flemeth said they needed Morgan, that without her, they would fail. Mother, this is not how I wanted this. I'm not even ready. You must be ready. Alone, these two must unite for Eldon against the Darkspawn. They need you, Morrigan. Without you, they will surely fail, and all will perish under the Blight. Even I. I... understand. He said that it made sense. Because just the two of them without knowledge of the Kakari Wilds, they would surely get lost. Angel said that she had another theory. Then she explained to Alistair that, as a child, she realized she had mage tendencies. It was a struggle, but she has been able to keep them hidden. It was a hard secret to carry all of her life because she secretly wanted to learn about magic, but it would have come at a very high price. She would have been taken from her home and her family shamed. Angel focused on combat with swords instead and practiced to be the best that she could be. Alistair started to go on and on about her being an apostate and Angel corrected him. She's a Grey Warden now. Flemeth must have sensed Angel's magic abilities when they first met her. That is why she came back to the tower to save them. Angel thinks... While Flemeth healed her, she did something to her because she does not feel the same. Nothing harmful, just different. And it is getting harder to hold the magic back. Angel thinks Flemeth sent Morgan with them to train Angel. Angel believes Flemeth is right. Without magic, they would not be successful against the Blight, just as without magic, they would not be alive today. After Alistair calmed down, after all, he's a Templar, he accepted that this was probably for the best. That is when Angel and Alistair decided they needed a plan, but first, Angel needed to talk to Morgan. What do you wish of me? If you must. Angel was about to ask Morgan about her magic background, but Morgan said, wouldn't you like to talk about magic being in your future? So it was out there. Morgan knew, as so did Flemeth. Angel had questions about apostates. You do not know. The Zealots use that word for any magic they do not control. The Chantry sees any mages not leashed to the Circle of Magi as apostates, and apostates could become Maleficarum, evil mages that resort to blood magic and become demon-enslaved abominations. It may even be true, still, those of us who prefer freedom see no reason to submit. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. 
The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. There were nights when the wilds called to me, tis true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. No, tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. Not all apostates use the forbidden blood arts. Maleficarum do, but to condemn all who do not fall under the circle's thrall for the sake of what might be is a dangerous path to walk. There are those who look on the word apostate as meaning freedom. Morrigan said that being a Grey Warden, Angel is safe from Templars, unlike her. She said that she would train her and packed some items that Angel could use, like a robe and a staff. Morgan suggested that Angel learn some basic damage spells, but more important, how to heal. Alistar walked over to them, and when told of the plan, especially about healing them, he agreed it would help them greatly. They also agreed that Morgan should start training Angel at camp before they go to Lothering. Walking back to the fire, Angel said a prayer to her parents, asking for their forgiveness and for their continued blessings. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.